here. Absolutely. So, again, you know, it's very hard to ban away ED carry. Yeah. Uh, I think that Jin should have been considered perhaps over the Varus, which, you know, we did see a little bit of, but then uh, mostly did not see too much of. I think the Ezreal ban is fine as well. We'll have to wait and but... see how it does go as we are hopping out of the rift for game number one. Match 26 already. Have to be a little careful with that as um, T. Oh, this is... Oh, I don't know if he saw him, though, but he should know where he is. But the pathing here is perfect to gank onto the mid lane. The yellow card comes in with the flash Q. Will follow up, and the damage will absolutely be there. Fantastic movement around the map here from Umpty. Yeah. Should have been opportunities as here comes the TP. I like this. Okay, flash does come in. Miss on the soul flare. Umpty is going to have to back away. Still some decent damage, and poke comes out from the Jin and should secure the objective here for the Kwangnong Freaks. Zumpty is still sticking around, though. It almost looks like they want to go for a fight here. On the side of Fred Brion, the TP will come in, and the dive into the backside. Rakan gets a huge engage, and that's two people dead already, but here comes Keen, now into the thick of five of them. But, you know, he's pretty tanky, but not quite tanky enough. Not able to kill a single member on the side of Fred Brion. That's Guangdong. You're going to be looking at finding the correct angles, making sure that it's not actually even fights. Find someone, blow them up, using your Renexa and your Nidalee, or a Solar Flare. Well, this is one way to do it. Flashless is Lava, gets a <laughs> free kill. Very nicely played there from Point to set that all up. And Fang Dong was just in position to take him down. Thank you, Hoyt. That's what we want to see as for the poke. Yeah, they do have some pretty insane poke on this side. As the Jin also coming out here. And wait for it. There you go. <laughs> and this great should be secured. If you're not, if you're not getting one of those things done, I don't think you're very happy. Now Sword is really trying to defend this ward here. He does take some damage as the TF ult is coming in. He's behind the team here as Lava is getting into the thick of things. He immediately goes down. Not sure about that one as now the light is super low. The engage is very broken up here on the side of Freda Brion. And that should mean that Guangdong Freaks will have the edge. Their chase is fantastic here as the spear will be perfect right on point. Elam is able to land that one. Hoyt goes in for a bit more. And you see a huge play caller does come in, lots of damage. And Umpty kept landing those cues, but never found an opportunity. Didn't even get to use his dragon kick. A very aggressive engage does not work for Fred Abrino. So uh, maybe next time. Uh, he did complete the Zonius, even though he didn't use the stopwatch. So he's oh, got that yes. uh, fully completed item. Points deducted from uh, Velda. Yes. Our uh, resident stopwatch. I, I uh, think holding on to the stopwatch is yeah. just fine. Um, a lot of zoning is actually being built in this game. It's pretty understandable with the amount of threats as we do have the slowdown. Going to force the uh, Zaya ultimate, and he's nearly burning down as the light goes behind him, and the snipe comes in. Teddy picks up the kill. Do you think that's funny? <laughs> I don't think it's funny, Velda. Sorry. I, uh, I sincerely apologize. You know my feelings on this map. Yeah. It's a very serious matter. <laughs> uh, Rise is... I can actually check. I have the paper here. He won one game recently. He did, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, he's 2 and 9. Mm. I Delicious. Don't, I don't love tunneling on stats, but in that case, I'm like, yes, let's tunnel. <laughs> yeah, <it's, laughs> I, I don't like it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not only about the win rate. It's about uh, the way he loses more so. Yeah. As Kongo Freaks, they don't have Baron, but they don't care. Uh, a really nice amount of poke and siege on this team. Even a nice amount of dive as well. You know, they can just do what they did last time, which is exactly this. Solar Flare, you get the Deadly Flourish out there. You pull out the uh, Jin ultimate. You're landing shots onto them. You're, you're softening them up. And uh, it did look like there was a bit of a scuffle in the jungle while that was going on, and Keen took a bit of damage. Well, we can just take this one. Okay, over the wall. Here comes the Rakan. They're going to try to burst down Keen through the Starix game, through the stopwatch. Can you do it is the question. The answer is no, but they did get a nice amount of poke on him. Problem is, he has teleport, and he's level 16, 
and he is going to be here for the fight. They're still to the re-engage, right? Teddy still has the, uh, the curtain almost available. Here uh -oh. comes the teleport. Oh, Eating no. the back line. Oh, no. Again, he doesn't have Dominus, but he's still a huge threat in the back. Umpty is so, so low. The miss on the stun onto Umpty is still pretty big as the suns are coming down onto Keen now as he front lines. Fong Nung Preach trying to get some damage onto this Drake, and they will get it for the sacrifice of Keen. Unlikely uh, to find much there. As we're just going ahead and poking, this should favor the side of Kwang Dung Freaks as well. Jin gonna open up here. He's gonna find Umpty for that first one. Sword is very far away from the rest of his team. Now the Rakan potentially looking for the engage, but Sword might just get blown up there in the front. Down he goes. The kick is fantastic from Umpty, and the Blade Caller gets a lot of value too. As Henna and Lava still alive, a pretty Close fight still as they will go for the re-engage. And Lava is in the front. He is not quite a tank. Henna, though, is getting so much work done. Another big blade caller. And he will stay alive. Advantage to the side of Kwangdong Freaks, though, as it is 3v2. And they will continue and pick up this Elder Drake. And looks like that is going to happen. Nonetheless, Valdez has slowly the base starts falling. Still 35 seconds left, and maybe we don't need a second elder. Maybe it's just the one here for Kwang Dong. Oh, that was big. Hena does pull out the cleanse at the exact right time, but having elder with this amount of poke and Baron minions shelling on the turrets, I think Kwang Dong have this nice blade caller there in the back onto LM, but he's got some heals. Hena has to throw out his ultimate as well. As Zumpy, he's going for a walk. He's behind enemy lines at this point, looking for a big kick. Don't know if, on. Yeah, I don't know if he's going to be able to find one here. As the lasers have been gigantic. Down goes the Elder, and they immediately pull the trigger as they get onto that front line. And Kwang the Freaks are like, no, 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 we don't want to fight this, actually. As uh, they're still on the backside here, Teddy not really able to find too much value. As here comes Fred at Freon looking for more and more. I don't know if you can get away or as Kwang Dong Freaks, Fred at Breon, they're chasing. Need to respect still. Well, the power available. I think you just take the win where you found it, but no, they want to keep going. <laughs> Getting the resets, but the poke is still big. Okay, well, here comes the turn as the mist is going to do some wonders. Umpty is in the back line. They're trying to burst down Teddy, and they absolutely will. It will be the triple kill eventually coming out here on the side of Brennan Breon. They get that, and here comes Brennan Breon barreling down the bottom lane. And teleports are going to come through. Only Fade is alive. Is this actually going to be the turnaround? <laughs> Kwang Dong! No. Oh, man. Well, they still got to deal with their base. I if no, Sword and Lava could they do they it alone, no, no, no. then what, maybe. Void and Fade are there. I don't know. I mean, they have a lot of turret damage here, especially with the Lich Bane, but... Oh boy, they're still getting in on this one. Fighting 2v2, look at this TP right on top of Victor. He's gonna be able to pick it up. The Chaos Storm though, gets some value as that one minion is gonna go down, but they still have the damage on the turret. And look at this, Sword is getting to work and Hoyt can't stop him. Horde is, Sword is going to be able to get it all on his lonesome and GG, Fred at Freon, turn it around and get the win in such flashy fashion. The clock striked 40 and it was all over. It's the Fred and Brian comfort zone. Yeah, 40 minutes, man. That's where they That's where they strive to be. That's where they thrive as a unit. But I think in the threat of Rain composition, they can poke and kite back so easily. They can engage on you. The only thing would be a relative lack of tankiness, and you still have Gragas, so like that's not even a real problem. It's just one I'm trying to find. Right now. Hundred percent combo. Otherwise, yeah. everyone in Fred Brian can get out. I think that Hextech Soul is the best, uh, just because you get that added slow with the Static Shiv. I feel like it really helps. Uh, they already have some really yeah. good, you know, chase down, and Infernal Soul is going to give you damage. But so is just Infernal Drakes, or, or rather Hextech Drakes in general. But if you add the Static Shiv, 
then it's going to be difficult. You know, you can lock down even a Corky or uh, a Zion eventually. So I, I do like that. Imagine if Teddy hits a Freeman ultimate with Infernum and... You're always going to feel good uh, CSing as Corky and slurping up as much gold as possible. Action. Action. No. <laughs> 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 good try, good try, guys. No I saw you, LM. You, you used your Q. That was good. <laughs> good shot, good shot. Okay, wait, wait, we have package, and we have a second Drake. Surely. You know, it's, it's kind of what we talked about before. You know, we have our fun, but, like, at the same time, if you find someone 3v1, you'll go for it. As here comes the package, the kick comes in, but it is not enough. First blood into the hands of, unfortunately for them, Delight. But you'll still take it because you get the enemy jungler and you take down the Mountain Drake. You give yourselves a really nice cushion going into the mid game. He didn't Whoa, build man. a full Shadow Flame. He's like, oh, wait, no, they've built MR. But they have. What? Oh, I mean, Corky does. And so well, does so does Gragas and so does Rakan. Yeah, I think finishing items. Is it a half measure? Is it not good? I think finishing items is oh. better. Oh, yeah, Corky's in this game. <laughs> we were so close to forgetting. <laughs> oh, okay. I wonder, I wonder how Kwangnung freaks are going to solve this issue. Uh, he currently has the package. Locking off on the flank. Needs to get into range. Has stopwatch as well. Monstrously oh. fed. See that fate jumped over the wall right when the dragon uh, got angry? A little bit of extra poke there on the fate as it uh, doesn't look like Elm wants to pull the trigger on that one. Because the engage is actually going to come out from Fred and Breon. They're going on to the very low uh, range of the graves. That is one thing I was scared about after the draft. Down he goes. They're going to give 700 gold into the pockets of Viego as Upti on the Viego is going to be able to get away with this heartbreaker. The chase is good from the... Oh, man! That was just Zaya. They don't have the Grogans, which I think is hurting them for sure. Here comes two people, actually. Umpty and Delight trying to make their way over to Keen. Nice cast. Decent cast. Not the best, as he is definitely going to go down here, as there is so much CC. He will be taking out 700, 600 gold into the pockets of... Uh, Umpty, and you can see that Lava with the package will be basically impossible to hold down. And he can just keep tabs on this Baron if they do go for it. Teddy, uh, you're dead. Oh, man, he nearly died. So close. Two R buttons, guys. Two. And this is the core issue for Kwangnung Freaks is that even with Keen drawing three people as we get uh, some action. Hey. <laughs> Let's go. Nicely done, Fate. Um... It doesn't matter, because you cannot force a Baron. Yes, if Kwangnung freaks us earlier that they could be on that objective already. Umti uh, was, I think, still in the... No, was there with the rest of Redabrion, collapsing onto Keen. But then there's Corky, and that kind of makes all other arguments moot, because good luck trying to get a Baron. As wow. Eight. <laughs> the crowd goes wild every time. It's kind of crazy. I mean, that, but again, they, can get this. they need to hit lava, I think. That's really the issue. Also, he needs to hit these rockets. As the damage is certainly getting in there, Keen now trying to front line with Hoyt. As they're trying to deny this as much as possible. As Hoyt is taking a huge amount of damage, and that's going to be LeBlanc picking it up, and the Lee Sin just disappears. But the Baron was taken by the Kwangdong Freaks, so. Now we'll see what they can do with it. It is 5v4 now in favor of Fred and Breon. They're trying to rotate over here to Fade, but not quite going to pick him up just yet. He's not going to fall for that. Cards are available. Very rapid rotations. Here for Fred and Breon. I think they want to die 5v4. Yeah, I think they should. Okay, well, the flash is not quite going to work, but they do find the Aphelios. Teddy's going to go down. So that means that now, 5v3, that's going to be 5v2. LM's still not available as the push is coming in here for Fred and Breon. And that might just be the end of the game. Baron minions or not, I don't think he can push through this Keen, desperately trying to clear the wave. I don't know. You see Fade, he's trying to find the angle too, but at the same time for Fred and Breon, I don't think you can end this. It, it's too risky. There's no objectives, but at the same time, look at that top wave. And teleport available on fate. You're taking a risk if everybody gets wiped. So they're just going to wait. They're so close to 40 minutes, Chronicler. They can taste it. As now, with the tankiness. And 
some of the life seal that they do have on their side. They are trying to tip away at this Elem, still looking for the angle. He's on vision now. As the damage is coming in. Keen now trying to front line. And there's one rocket. <laughs> That'll do one, it. One rocket, one. As Moonlight Vigil is going to be pretty good. Hits a couple of them. Collateral damage does come in and hits them down. But this Baron, but this Elder goes the way of the Zaya at the end of it all. And immediately the Elder damage does come in. Keen is trying his darndest to do what he can in the Dragon Pit. He is actually so tanky. He's too tanky. As, uh, nope, he's going to get executed by Sword. And that should be it, guys. That should be the end of the game, just like that. And as a Kwangdong fan, it was not the best of nights. As a Fred Abrian fan, this is where they shine. This is the comfort zone. And this is hopefully one of the last times that we see Corky being left open hopefully. on B1 uh, and, and not getting picked as Fred Abrian. They take their time, but they do it cleanly, Valdez. They got past 40. They made it to the Elder Flip. That's their comfort zone. They feel real good. They get the Elder down. It's taken by the Zaya. Can they end the game is the question. Wait. The light is going to go down. Lava Teddy. still alive here. And Lava, all he's got to do is kite around the Nexus, and nobody can kill him. Down it goes. GG. That's the damage numbers are hilarious. Fate tried his best, as did Keen, I feel. You know, Tever Teddy never really got a chance because a lot of the team fights were just, you know, Corky would land one bomb, and they were like, well, I guess we don't get to fight anymore. Yeah, I think in, in a composition like this, Teddy never had an opportunity, right? Like, the, there's just no, not really a way for him, if uh, Fred Brian played out well, to ever get anything done. And Thank you very much, guys. This is season for the interpret translation joined by Sword and Lava from Fred Brian. Congratulations. First up, Sword, this was your comeback match. How do you feel? Oh, to be honest. It's really hard to describe, you know, it was a new start, it was something really new for me. It's so meaningful for me, especially that I was able to play this match and also it was so thrilling in the end. And hello fans, this is Freddy Brion's top sword, Songwon Choi. Welcome back. Whoa, we had some um, tough moments in game number one as well. Did you feel extra pressure, especially because of the fact that you are making your return in the LCK? To be honest, today, you know, I didn't focus on the opponents, how they play. I, I rather wanted to focus on myself and our team, how we play together. So my focal point was our team play and teamwork. And Lava, LOL King, finally you stop your three match losing streak and you are gonna be having a great vacation after this victory. I mean, I thought our performance early on was decent, but with that losing streak we were falling apart, but with this victory I think we will be able to have a really nice break. He wasn't that nervous, Sword, so I wasn't too worried about having him on the roster. I guess you are still used to the LCK stage, right? Definitely. We had an early lock-in from Kwangdong Freaks of Renekton Middle League Combo, and you decided to play Gwen into them. Gwen is really good into Renekton when it comes down to the landing phase, but I do feel a lot of pressure of the potential gank from the jungler, so, but I still thought that I would be able to counter that play, but still Keen is Keen. He was so strong in lane, so yeah, my laning phase didn't really go well, but still late game is what Gwen loves, so I still wanted to um, wait until I hit the power spike in the end. In fact, we had some epic um, game ending highlight from game number one. Did you have did you have the confidence that you'll be able to close out the game? The moment when TF teleported down to the bottom lane and the rest was the rest were fighting on the top lane, and then I also joined them for the back door. I thought it was gonna be a very easy, you know, 
end for us, but Leona and Victor was fighting so hard to stop us. But Lava, that short Destiny Gate was so on point, actually. So we were able to get a kill onto that Victor and close out the game. Yeah, Lava, that three centimeter ult was so impressive. Tell us about that. We were, you know, losing the late game. So it was like now or never for us. So I just wanted to, you know, go for that play, give it a shot. And then after I saw Victor coming back, I thought it was pretty much impossible, but I just wanted to still give it a shot and trust ourselves. In game number two, we only had two kills up until 35 minute mark in the game. When was the moment that you had the confidence to win in the end? I mean, not until we had the Elder fight, but still, you know, I could feel that I was scaling pretty well into the mid and the late game. So with the poke damage I've got, I was sure that we will be able to win. You, you two were the one, you know, breaking down the Nexus in game number one and game number two as well. So is there any memorable moment uh, you guys had throughout the series today? Any calls? Well, game number one, you know, I was supposed to win lane, but, you know, I got dismantled. But still, my teammates were telling me, it's okay, it's okay, it's still one wins late game. So, with their encouragement, I was able to cheer her up. And then, that was the power that actually enabled me to win the late game team fights. I want to say thank you to my teammates. What about you, Lava? Any call you remember? Nothing particular? How did the players react after you <laughs> used the final TF ult? <laughs> Nothing, no reaction to be honest? It was, I mean, everyone on our team doesn't really talk much. Moving on, we had the Friday Freon only comp down on the bottom lane, the Airy Zaya and Recon comp. Why do you guys love that lovers duo so much with that specific rune? Our coaching staffs are always watching, you know, how other regions are playing, their draft, their picks, and we tried it out. And Hena was pretty good on that build, so we thought this is very viable. Your next opponent is Nongshin Red Force. And that's a must win series in order to start off a winning streak. <coughs> to be honest, we have a very long way to go, to be perfectly honest. You know, I just want to focus solely on our teamwork and fundamentals and, you know, have this all the puzzle work together. And Lava, would you like to add on to that? We finally won, and we finally kind of learned and realized how to win League of Legends, so we will, from now on, adapt that into the upcoming matches. Any last message for the fans out here and all also watching the match? Happy New Year, everyone. Happy Lunar New Year. I'll see you guys back after the break. And that will be it from Lava and Sword from Fredipurion and back to the Analyst Something Space. Thank you.